everyone and um, welcome to the textured chevron tutorial or zigzag um, I'm going to show you how to make this lovely stitch it's great for blankets um, but you can obviously use it for anything you want I mean this one if carried on lengthways would make a really pretty scarf um, so on the one side it's just a normal smooth pattern but then when you turn it over it is a textured pattern and it's got lovely ridges on every colour change um, and I think it's really really beautiful so let's get started. So for this tutorial I'm going to be using the Karen Simply Soft and I'm going to be using a five and a half millimeter crochet hook. So for our foundation chain we're going to be working in multiples of 25 so you can do it obviously whatever length you like so long as you've done a multiple of 25 and remember it because of the zigzag pattern it will um, shrink up slightly as the pattern where works up so as I say we're going to go in multiples of 25 so you're just going to do your starting chain in multiples of 25 I'm just going to do 50 because obviously I'm just doing a sample piece so to do your chain you're going to yarn over and pull through, so that's two, I've already done one. And you're going to grab your yarn and pull through, that's three, four, five, six, seven. And obviously you want to keep it quite loose, because if you work your foundation chain too tight, um, then it will look as you work up but your blanket will look like it's going out on an angle because obviously your stitches are getting bigger so you want to make sure you keep your foundation chain nice and loose and work your multiples of 25 and I'll meet you back there in a minute so I've just worked my 50 and whatever length you get to you need to add on an additional 5 chains onto the end so 1, 2, 3 four and five and this is just for turning. So now that we've worked out the whole of our foundation chain we're going to work our way back along and we're going to be doing all of our stitches in double crochet. Now that's the UK term if you were in the US this would be single crochet. So we're going to work our first double crochet into the second chain from the hook. So that's the first chain and then this is your second chain. So to do a double you want to insert your hook straight into that chain, yarn over and pull up. You've got two loops on your hook and yarn over, pull through both. And then we're going to do a double again into the next chain. So we've done our two double crochets. And now we're going to miss one chain, so we're going to miss this next one here. And then we're going to do 11 double crochets, so one into each of the next 11 stitches. So we're going to miss one and then do 11 double crochets. So I've missed one there and I'm going into the next stitch and I'm going to do 11. So one two. And 11. So then into the next stitch we're going to form our peak. So we're going to do three double crochets into the next stitch. So all together in this same stitch here. So we're going to do that's one, two, and three, so that's three double crochets all into the same stitch. 
and then we're going to work our way down towards the dip. So we're going to do 11 again, so one double crochet into each of the next 11 stitches. It's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. So now we're going to work the dip and to work the dip we're going to skip two chains. Now at the very beginning we only skipped one and it will be the same when we come to the other end as well. So in the beginning you only skip one chain here but when you're working all of your centre dips in the middle of your blanket you will miss two chains. So we're going to skip two, so one, two and then we're going to do one double crochet again into each of the next 11 stitches. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then again we're back up at the peak. So we're going to do three double crochets all together in the next stitch. So one, two, and three. And then we're going to work our way back down once more. And we're going to work one double crochet into the next 11 again. So one, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven. And then count this one as if you were on your way back down to your very, very last peak. So you continue the pattern as before, doing your three in your peak and missing two to create your dip. But when you were coming down to the end of your foundation chain um, you would only miss one again like we did at the very beginning so we're going to skip this next one and then we've got two chains left here so we're going to skip one and then do one double crochet into those last two stitches so there's one and two so that is our very first row completed it doesn't look like very much at the minute, obviously the pattern's not particularly defined just yet, but it will become much more defined and apparent as you work on with the pattern. So to start the next row, we are going to chain one, and then we're going to turn, and then I'm going to do two rows of each colour. So the next one, we're going to do one double crochet, and you need to make sure that you do it into the very base of the chain that we've just created here. So you make sure you don't skip doing that, otherwise your blanket um, won't work up properly and your edges won't be straight. So right into the base of that stitch we're going to do one double crochet. And then we're going to do a double crochet into the next stitch. So that's two double crochets. And then we're going to miss one like we do when we start each new row. We're going to miss one. And then we're going to do 11 double crochets. 
and when you do your double crochets on this round make sure you're catching both of the loops at the top make sure you have your V like this make sure you've got your V on the top because in the next couple of rows to create the textured effect it will be different so two three four five six seven eight And 11 and we're now going to create our peak again so it's same principle as before we're going to do three double crochets all together into the next stitch one two and three and then we're going to work our way back down again so we're going to do one double crochet into the next 11 11. So we're back at our dip and again because we're now in the middle sections of the dips in the blanket we're going to skip two chains. So we're going to skip one and two and we're going to go straight in and start our next 11 double crochets back up to the peak. And you're going to just carry on that pattern all the way you're going to do your 11 and then you're going to create your peak by doing your three double crochets together into the same stitch and then you'll work 11 back down and skip two. So if you want to carry on doing that and then just meet me when you're on your last um, section down from your peak down to your very last dip if you want to meet me when we get back to there. So I'm just working my way back down my from my final peak. So I've just done one. I'm going to do my 11. So two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. nine, ten and eleven and then again because we're at the end section we're only going to miss one this time oops we're only going to miss one this time instead of two oops so we're going to skip one and work our double crochet and then you just need to make sure that you do catch this very last stitch as well to keep your edges nice and straight so we've missed one, done one double and then you're going to do your last double into the top of that stitch but again make sure you are catching the V on the top and do your last double. Now here I'm actually going to tie off and I'm going to change colour and then we'll work our way back up and we will start to create the textured effect. So you can see it is getting a little more defined now as we're working on. Now I'm going to do two rows of each colour. You can do three rows, four rows or just one if you really wanted to. Um, but I'm just going to do two rows just on this sample piece so that I can show you how to create the textured effect. 
Um, and we're going to create the textured effect by working just into the back loops. Um, but obviously you would only work into the back loops when you change colour. You wouldn't work into the back loops when you're still using the same colour. So however many rows of the same colour you're doing, just work into the back loops only on the very first row when we change colour now. So I'm going to attach my yarn. And as always I like to tie mine on but this is just a personal preference. And then I'm going to pull my yarn up and I'm going to chain one and then I'm going to turn. So now um, you're going to need to make sure you do your very first double into the base of this chain that we've just created as always. So for this very first chain you are going to work under both loops just for that very first chain here. And now we're going to use the exact same principle, but again, only working into the back loops from the previous row. So you want to insert your hook just into the back loop. So you can see we've got the V normally, but you're just going to work in the back loop just here. I'm going to do a double. And so that's our two doubles and now we need to miss one just as the pattern did previously. And then we're going to do our 11 doubles working up to the peak but only in the back loop. So that's one, two, three, four, Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, and eleven, and then just as before, you're going to do your three doubles but only into the back loop of this top stitch to create our peak. So one, two and three all in the same stitch and then we're going to work our way back down doing 11 but only into the back stitches. Two, three, four, five. And you are just going to carry on the pattern exactly now as you did before by doing your 11 back down to your dip and then you will skip two for the center dips in your blanket. So every everyone that's in the center you'll skip two. And then obviously when you're coming down from your final peak towards the end of your blanket when you've done your 11 coming back down you're going to only skip one chain and then do your two final double crochets into the two spaces that are left but again make sure you only use the back loops for this row so I'll meet you back towards the end of the row just to recap on how to finish off the row so I've just done my final peak and then I've worked my 11 double crochets and I'm going to skip one chain because we're coming to the end of our row and then I'm going to do, oops, did that completely wrong, didn't skip a chain there at all. <laughs> and I'm now going to skip one because we're coming to the end of our row and I'm going to do my final two just except when we come to do the very last one, we're not going to do it in the back loops, we're actually going to catch both loops as normal, just for that final one in this row. And then again, I'm going to do one more row in this color, so I'm going to chain one and turn. And because I'm using the same color, I'm not going to be working in the back loops, I'm going to be working in the normal V at the top and catching both of the stitches. Um, but that's because I only want the textured effect to be noticeable when I've changed colour. I don't want it to be noticeable for every row. I only want the, the ridge when I change colour. 
So I'm going to work my next row exactly as I did before and then I will meet you back shortly just to show you how it's working up as I'm going along. So if you remember, use both loops when you're using the same colour and then when you do your colour change you're going to just work in the back loops all the way along except for your very first and very end double in each row you will do it in the both loops but then the rest of it you would just do it in the back so both loops for the same colour when you change colour your very first row will be in the back loops so I will see you back shortly and we'll just see how the blanket's taking shape so I've worked up a few more rows now, I've done two rows of each colour um, just so you can see how it's starting to look um, this is one side of it and you can see it's um, as you would normally expect it's all quite flat but then when you turn it over you can see the textured look that you're starting to get with it so obviously with each change of colour um, you will create almost like a ribbed effect I don't know whether you can really see that clearly. Um, um, so just by working in the back loops you do create a ribbed textured look to your work on the one side and then it's just normal on the front or the back whichever way you want to use it. Now obviously all my ribs are on the same side because I've only been doing two rows of each colour However, if you were to do an odd number of rows, so three, five, seven, etc., um, you would then be alternating between rows. So one would be on one side, and then the next change would be on the other side, and then one would be on the other side again. And it would work up like that. But if you want them all to be on the same side, then you would need to do an even number of rows. And if you want to alternate between one side and the other, then you would do an odd number of rows. But that's it for this tutorial. I really hope you thought it was something a little bit different. And if you'd like to subscribe, then obviously you'll keep up to date with all of my new tutorials as they come along. And just give me a thumbs up if you liked it as well, because that's always appreciated. And I will see you next time in my next tutorial.